Well, good morning, everyone. Welcome to this morning's study. And we're going to continue looking at um, uh, the civil wars in in the Bible. And uh, so before we begin, can you join me in a word of prayer? Uh, dear gracious Heavenly Father, we are thankful for all of the things that you've been teaching us. And we just pray for your Holy Spirit to be here now as we open your word together. Um, we pray for each person and the struggles that they face each day. And we pray that we can encourage one another with our words and our prayers. And that we can be obedient to your word, that we can reflect your character to all around us. We ask for forgiveness for our sins. And um, we ask for Christ's righteousness to cover us and fill us and be seen through us. Help us to participate in the work that you are doing in our lives uh, to your glory. Be with us now, we pray and ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, good morning again, everyone. And um, so we were looking at um, uh, the prophecy of Josiah, and we were looking at its um, fulfillment. So so first we had actually gone to the Civil War in 742 B.C. But then we, we, we went back to... Uh, uh, chapter 11, 12, and 13 of First Kings, right? So in these chapters, uh, we see that we have these enemies of Solomon. He has three enemies, but it's the third enemy, Jeroboam, who's going to end up uh, becoming the king uh, of northern Israel. So the kingdom is going to be divided. There's a prophecy regarding that, and there's this new garment that's torn into 12 pieces, Ten are given to uh, Jeroboam, and one is given to Rehoboam. And it, the question is what that we asked, and we still don't really have a good answer. Why is it torn into 12, but only 11 pieces are referred to? It, I, I find these little kinds of details interesting. Not sure what it means particularly. Um, but one of the things we see here that, that's kind of interesting is that this story is in 1 Kings chapter 11, 12, and 13. And when we were studying these, we were discussing this in the context of, well, first we have the 11 pieces that are actually only referred to, but there's 12 pieces, and, and that this is referring to the tribes, but we also came to recognize there are actually 13 tribes, if we count Joseph's tribe as two tribes. Ephraim and Manasseh. So it's kind of interesting that these three chapters that address this division uh, are connected to these symbols. And any thoughts about that? Is, you know, I mean, I'm just kind of introducing it here. It's early in the morning. Any ideas of why that is? What it, What is God trying to show us with these chapter numbers and the relationship of the chapter numbers to the numbers that are being presented in these chapters. Okay. Anybody? Are we to be paying attention given that, that this is related with the actual number of tribes when you, when you count the two tribes allotted to Joseph and Levi? Is yeah. it? Yeah. yeah. So it relates to the number of tribes. Right. They relate to the symbols here. So the eleven, the eleven pieces that are only distributed, right? They cut them into twelve. This new garment into twelve pieces, but ten are given to Jeroboam, and one it said is given to Rehoboam. Well, where, where's the other piece? So you have eleven, right? Right. And of course you have twelve because it was cut into twelve pieces, and we generally think of there as being twelve tribes. Now we know Benjamin's going to be with Judah, but it doesn't say you know that. Uh, Rehoboam gets two pieces. He gets one. And then, of course, there are 13, right? So when we looked at Numbers chapter 3, um, and we we dealt with uh, the number of Levites and in, in other studies in a lot more detail. But the idea w was if you took the number of uh, the shekels, right, 
um, because there's going to be five shekels. Um, uh, How does that go? Five shekels for uh, the 273. So you multiply that uh, times five and you get 1365. And if you take 1365 and you divide it by 13, you get 105, right? So that's the symbol of the 10th day of the fifth month. So there's uh, these connections between, uh, so, and 105 uh, times 12 is 1260. So the 1260 is seen here in, I'm not even there on that chapter, but if you go to Numbers chapter three, where you're going to get that symbol of 273, I have this written out in several studies. Uh, This is the redemption of the firstborn. We have the symbol of 1260 by taking the 12 times the 105 to get 1260. But first divide, so first you take, here, I'll do this so you just can see it for anybody who's not sure what I'm talking about. So if you take the 273 uh, that have to be redeemed, so that's the number of of Levites uh, that exceed the number of, or not the number of, Le- the number of the firstborn that exceed the number of the Levites. So these need to be redeemed. So you take 273 and you multiply it by the five shekels. And you get 1365. That's the number of shekels that have to be paid. Right. So that's of well, the first burn of the children of Israel took he the money, a thousand three hundred and three score and five shekels. That's thirteen hundred and sixty five. And then you divide it by thirteen and you get this symbol one of five, which is the tenth day of the fifth month. But if you multiply it by the twelve tribes, then you get twelve sixty. So in a sense, you can say it's kind of there's thirteen tribes, including the Levites. And so. But if you just take the 12 tribes, it's 1260. So that symbol is also in um, Acts 27, the symbols connecting to the 2520 and the 273, right? So those symbols all kind of fit together. Now, the reason why uh, we consider this significant then here uh, when we're looking at uh, the story in Kings is just because we have this numbering of these tribes being symbolized in in this story so um so in first kings right, right so so you have these symbols attached here so there's symbols that attach us to our understanding in the movement at the present time right that that's why they're important okay so so, because what we're doing here is we're looking at this civil war back, this is the revolutionary war, maybe it could be called, but there's going to be this separation into the north and northern kingdom and the southern kingdom. And, and then there's going to be the civil war in 742. So this is in 977, we have 742. And in this, the prophecy of Josiah connects us to Ezekiel chapter four. So we went through that a little bit. Um, but we know there's these periods or spans of time, the 390 years and the 40 years, and they're tied together by the prophecy of Josiah. So the prophecy of Josiah is given in 977, fulfilled in 627. And uh, from the time it's given to the time it's fulfilled, that's where we count the 390 and the 40 uh, uh, respectively. So, so they both are going to end in 587 at the beginning of the siege, which is what Ezekiel is predicting. Right. So this is, this is, is something that we came to understand. Uh, at least I came to understand it, uh, in 2014 regarding the spans of time and then connected it in 2016 to the prophecy of Josiah. So I knew I had the spans of time, but I had nothing to start the 40 years. I didn't know why I had 627. And then when I found that that was the fulfillment of the prophecy of Josiah, then it tied these things together. And so the the point is these civil wars are, well, especially this first civil war, is connected to the prophecy of Ezekiel. Um. But we also have this other civil war 
that is going to connect us to 18, well, to 1798 and 1844, right? It's going to connect us to Millerite history. So with the 2520s and, and all the way up to 1863. So it's going to connect us all the way back to 742, um, the land being forsaken of both its kings in 723 and 677, and then that being mirrored at the end. So 1798, 1844, and 1863. And so these connections of these civil wars in biblical history to the civil war in the United States is extremely profound. It's not something that we should um, just skip over. It's something that, that we have to understand if we're going to understand the civil wars in Daniel chapter 11 between the North and the South and understand how they relate to our history. Because it's one thing to just say, well, there's civil wars between the North and the South, and we're going to use Daniel chapter 11, verse 40, and we're going to apply it. But we, we know that we have to, if we're following Miller's rules, what do we have to do? If we're going to understand the scriptures, what do we have to do? We have a symbol. We have some things happening, battle between the North and the South. What do we have to do to understand it? Bring all the scriptures together. Right. So bring them all together. And that's what we did when we were studying uh, Daniel chapter 11, dealing with Persia. We looked at everything that we could possibly think of that would relate to um, the kingdom of Persia and understanding those seven kings of Persia. Right. So, well, and specifically, uh, you know, related to Trump. So we looked at everything. And then when we did that, we, we drew conclusions that weren't obvious to us without doing that. That is, we wouldn't have seen uh, things the way we did if we had only taken some of the scriptures. So now we're looking at, at all of the scriptures as much as we possibly can. Now, the reason why we're this Ezekiel is important, because as you can see with the 2520 and all these things, is that we're seeing how the past brings us to the present. Because the whole idea is that as we pass over the ground of fulfilled prophecy, light reflects back upon past events. That is, what happens now helps us to understand the past. And as we look at the past, it shines light ahead of us on our path so that we can understand what's coming. So that's that's the significance of understanding these things. And it's not so that we can just, you know, be in the know about final events. It's really about the preparation that we personally need to be prepared for those events. Not just so one is first personally, we have to be able to pass through those events and, and reflect Christ's character. But we also have to give a message of warning to those around us. And it has to be a clear trumpet sound. It can't be a bunch of guessing, right? I mean, God is not asking us to make a bunch of predictions and these predictions not happen. And then finally, one day we just get it right. Um, you understand what I'm saying there, right? Because people can, people make all kinds of predictions all the time. And when people make predictions, there's, you got thousands of people all over the world making all kinds of predictions. Every once in a while, somebody's going to get one of those predictions right. But that's going to be more by just sheer accident than anything. Right. Somebody did a study on, uh, you know, um, and Ryan says a broken clock is right twice a day. Yes. And, um, um, and I think, I think it was Rennie Nordenbergen who did a study on, um, you know, the sort of the monthly pronosticators. Uh, the, you know, those false prophets, the, the people who predict, you know, who's going to be president and, you know, next election, who's going to win and stuff like that. And and these people are mostly wrong. But every once in a while, one of them gets something right. And, and of course, they say, oh, I predicted this. But, um, you know, if you're predicting lots of different things, um, you know, for instance, I could I could write 
you know, some letters and mail them to myself with predictions about what's going to happen um, about anything. I mean, I could predict sporting events. I could predict, uh, you know, presidents of the United States who's going to win and whatever. Uh, write a whole bunch of different predictions, mail them to myself. And then, you know, when those predictions come true, I can, you know, have this envelope all sealed and, you know, knowing which one's which and, you know, open it up and show people how I predicted whatever it was, um, you know, well in advance. Right. And that's kind of what a lot of a lot of predictions are like. People are making so many predictions. And so one of these days, they're going to get some things right. And that's going to, in some people's mind, tell them that, you know, this is of God. But this is not how it works. God gives us, we have the sure word of prophecy. Right? It's a light that shines in a dark place. And uh, the purpose of prophecy is to establish our faith in God's word, not our faith in man. Not our faith, faith in a group of men, but in Christ himself for us individually. And um, so if we think that somehow if we make the right prediction about some event, that then we sort of are uh, going to be validated, listened to, something like that. That's not the purpose of prophecy. And so God isn't isn't trying to give us in advance so that we can be uh, what's going to happen, so that we can be vindicated in some way. It's for us personally so that we can have a faith and trust in God and a dependence upon him uh, that's real, that's not based upon our feelings. It's based upon reality. So, so that's why looking at all of these things are important and understanding these connections from the past with the present. So we have the present and this helps us make solid decisions about what to believe um, and what it is that we have to do to prepare. And so my, my perspective is that what I see happening within the movement is actually counterproductive spiritually. That is, it's going to cause a lot of people to lose their way. And that's not a very popular message because one of the reasons that people believe these things is because of self. It's more about self than it is about truth. I know it's kind of a harsh thing to say because it's kind of me in a sense judging, but not individuals, just in a general sense and understanding how things work. I know, know that people, I know, I know my heart, what it's like. So I know that people are full of self and when they start attacking others in, you know, in the type of way that we have seen in this movement, that that's not productive. And so as much as we can, we pray for one another. We should try to encourage one another. We should not be tearing down one another. And I don't want to be tearing down people. I mean, even in, in this, I want to be warning people that they have to be careful about what they believe. So, so anyway, that's, as we've looked at this, uh, these verses in first Kings chapter 11, 12 and 13, and we've connected it to the prophecy of Ezekiel and we've connected this, um, we connected this to the civil war by 235 years. So it's 235 years from this, from, uh, 587 to 742, right? And then it's going to be 19 years, which is a metonic cycle, which is 235 months uh, to Hoshea being taken captive in 723. So, so this structure we're going to look at, let's switch this here in a second as soon as I get to the page. Okay, so we looked at this structure here. So we have November 22, 977 BC. That's the 15th day of the eighth month. We have that symbol connected in Ezekiel because that's when he's August 15th is when he's going to start lying on his right side. So we have the 235 years, then the 235 months from 742 to 723. 
Uh, in there, we have the Civil War that ends, and there's 25, 20 years from the end of the Civil War uh, to November 28th, 1782. So what we have done is we've taken this Civil War in um, the history of ancient Israel, these two civil wars, and we've used them to connect to the Revolutionary War and the Civil Wars in American history. And the thing that we see in November 22nd, 977, is... Your screen, yeah, your screen's not showing. Yeah, it says that it was invalid what I selected. Yeah, so I have to do that again. Don't know why I did that. There we go. Probably because the program was frozen at the time I tried to share the screen. So, yeah, you can see that there now. Um, and so what we have in November 22, 977 B.C. is a counterfeit feast day, well, it's a fast day or whatever it is. It's, it's a counterfeit of the Day of Atonement. And in American history, we have the American government proclaiming these fast days and these thanksgivings, right? So prayer and fasting and thanksgiving. And so this thanksgiving, this is this is where in 2018, Heidi and I came up with this Thanksgiving Day prediction regarding November 22nd, 2018. And, and of course, you can see there the, the November 22nd date at the end and also November 25th, 2018 date. So November 22nd was um, Thanksgiving. Of course, that's we made this prediction like the day before Thanksgiving, but we had discovered it a few days before. And then we had a study. And, and in that study, you know, we, we look specifically at these dates and how to understand it. So November 22nd, 2018 is actually in the biblical calendar, the 12th day of the eighth month. and uh, but the 15th day of the eighth month is November 25th. That's the Sunday in 2018. So that's just the, the 12th and the 13th way mark that I have on these lines. <clears throat> and you can kind of notice there's this uh, 11, 12, 13 there with um, uh, November 23, 2017 is Trump's first Thanksgiving. Right. So. uh so that's kind of interesting. You got just it's just my chart, but it's all the different way marks that I put on there. So you got that 11, 12, 13. So that wasn't intentional to match up with the chapters 11, 12, and 13 or anything, but it's interesting. It does. Um, but the 15th day of the eighth month is actually November 25th. So when we made the prediction, the prediction was that Trump Trump's hand was going to be restrained. And Trump's hand was then going to be loosed because this is what happens to Jeroboam. And the prophet comes in and prophesies. So let's look there. And behold, there came a man of God out of Judah by the word of the Lord unto Bethel. And Jeroboam stood by the altar to burn incense. We know from the previous chapter, this is the 15th day of the eighth month. And he cried against the altar in the word of the Lord and said, oh, altar, altar. So we have a doubling of altar. We know that the symbol, that's a symbol of the midnight cry. And of course, this is on this date, the 15th day of the eighth month, which symbolizes August 15th, 1844. So we have this doubling. Thus said the Lord, behold, a child shall be born unto the house of David, Josiah by name. And upon thee shall he offer the priests of the high places that burn incense upon thee, and men's bones shall be burnt upon thee. And he gave a sign the same day, saying, this is the sign which the Lord hath spoken. Behold, the altar shall be rent, and the ashes that are upon it shall be poured out. And it came to pass, when King Jeroboam heard the saying of the man of God, which had cried against the altar in Bethel, that he put forth his hand from the altar, saying, Lay hold on him. And his hand, which he had put forth against him, dried up so that he could not pull it in again to him. The altar was rent, and ashes poured out from the altar according to the sign which the man of God had given by the word of the Lord. And the king answered and said unto the man of God, Entreat now the face of the Lord thy God and pray for me, that my hand may be restored me again. And the man of God besought the Lord, and the king's hand was restored to him, was restored him again, and became as it was before. And the king said unto the man of God, Come home with me and refresh thyself, and I will give thee a reward. Right. 
And the man of God said unto the king, If thou wilt give me half thine house, I will not go with thee. Neither will I eat bread nor drink water in this place. For so it was charged me by the word of the Lord, saying, Eat no bread nor drink water. Return again by the same way that thou camest. So he went another way and returned not by the way that he came to Bethel. So anyway, there's lots probably here that we're missing. But the main point that we had in 2018, so on November 21st when we do this study, um, we say, well, if this is applying to Trump and and this is about the Thanksgiving that's coming up, then we're going to see that Trump's hand is going to be restrained and Trump's hand is then going to be loosed. And and we said, you know, it, well, it has to do with the North and the South. And so we said, well, maybe it has something to do, you know, with, with Russia or something like that. Right. We didn't know at that time, you know, how to apply the North and the South here. So, um, so then what happened on November 22nd? So we made this prediction. And on November 22nd, uh, Trump is going to, um, he's going to present, well, he's going to talk to the soldiers like he does. And he makes sort of an appeal. There's stuff going on at the border uh, between uh, the United States and Mexico. And um so he was he was saying that they need to bring in the military or something to this effect to to basically fight against these people trying to get in. Now, before that, there was a the Ninth Court Circuit, whatever that really is in the United States, had made basically a restraining order on Trump as far as what he could do at the border. So. Even though he's making this claim, I want you to do this, um, his hand is restrained. And then on the Sunday, on the 15th day of the eighth month, his hand is going to be loosed. That is, they are actually going to fire tear gas and all this different stuff, stuff at the border. Now, on November 9th, 2019, so basically almost a year later, when I was asked to present this, on the Sunday, so this November 10th, actually, 2019, in Arkansas. Uh, Clayton was there, Bronwyn, um, Larry Hine, um, Jeff, Stephen Odilio, and myself. Uh, I can't think if there was anyone else there. And, and they recorded three presentations, the first two by me, the third by Jeff. Um, and so I go through this Thanksgiving Day prediction. And, uh, they, they were questioning me about it for, I think the main reason is, uh, they saw it as some kind of false prediction that I made or something and they were trying to expose me, Bronwyn or whatever. I don't know. Uh, because I, I basically got kicked out of the School of the Prophets partly for the, making this prediction. Um, you know, wasn't right away. It wasn't until like, uh, February that I got kicked out, but um, it's a long story to go through that. But anyway, the point is, when you look at this chart, um, we have these two dates. The November 22 ties to 977, and the 15th day of the eighth month ties to 977. Just in our history, those are two separate dates, the biblical date and the Gregorian date here, and it's the Julian date in uh, 977. So, so to me, that seemed like, well, we could predict something, but we couldn't really predict what it was. So, I mean, we couldn't predict that it would be something about what happened at the, at the, the border, the north and the south side of the border and between Mexico and the United States. But that was to me what, how this prophecy was fulfilled. And the reason that we did this prophecy is to try to see, well, I mean, I didn't do it intentionally. It just, we studied the civil wars and we found the structure. And so then the question was, well, what does it mean? Can we predict future events? And this is shortly after, you know, the, this is like well, a month and a half after uh, the November 9th prediction by Tess back in October 3rd. So 
we're looking at a month and a half later, and I'm still questioning, you know, the whole idea, can we predict future events? And so to me, it seemed like, well, we can put a date there, and after the date passes, we can sort of see, oh, well, that's what happened. But it wasn't clear to me that we could actually predict events on certain dates. Um, so they had it as if I was trying to predict, you know, sort of that I would consider myself a prophet or something, that I was trying to predict this and that I, I, I claimed that, that I had predicted these events, uh, which isn't what I claimed. I would claim that we actually couldn't predict the events because we didn't predict what happened. We, we just had the general idea of what those symbols were, but what they meant in actuality uh, could be different. Now then Jeff, when he did his presentation, he's going to say, well, this is all correct. Everything Theodore did here is correct. That's interesting. Um, Around note, I'll look at that in a minute. Um, but Jeff said, well, I think this is all correct, except what happened. And so Jeff interpreted this differently. He interpreted this having something to do with Islam because of the turkey, right? So deal connected with Thanksgiving, there's this turkey that's released. Um, and so he was somehow connecting, and I don't fully understand his argument, I was just happy that he accepted the structure. And he said, well, we should accept this because this is all what we already know. We already know this through the 2520s and different things that, that this civil wars are connected to our history. So he accepted the structure. He just had a different interpretation. Now, part of it is Clayton was not really happy with my interpretation because he said that's all, consp- all leftist conspiracy theories. Um, you know, that what happened at the border, that's all just, you know, hyped up in the media, almost like none of it actually happened. Uh, but the reality is it did happen. And, and the restraining order, order from the ninth uh, court circuit, or circuit court, whatever it's called, those are all just facts, right? They're not interpretations. So I still think that if we're going to look at this prediction, the best way to understand its fulfillment is Trump's speech on Thanksgiving and then what happened three days later at the American border on November 25th. But we couldn't have predicted that. Like there was nothing, nothing about any of this timeline that could tell us what the restraint of Trump's hand would be or what the loosening of his hand would be. Does, does that make sense to people? I know it's kind of a quick study on this, but, and I'm not going to look at all the details here. We have these Thanksgivings and so forth, which we kind of looked at. So we're going to have the first uh, Thanksgiving that's ever on a Thursday. That's November 28, 1798. And I believe um, we were studying these things, you know, at the end of November too. And the November 26, 1789, that's going to be when George Washington, the first president of the United States, actually proclaims a Thanksgiving, and it's going to be on Thursday. And he, he proclaims it on October 3rd, and and then we're going to see that um, the same thing happens when Lincoln on November 26th has this Thanksgiving in 1863. Um, so that's going to be um, uh, 74 years after Right, so you're going to have a Thanksgiving again on a Thursday and also November 26th. And he's going to make the proclamation also on October 3rd. And from then on, Thanksgiving's always that connected with that last Thursday in November. Right. So, so it connects the revolution and the beginning of the United States with this civil war in 1863. Right. In, in Adventist history. So, so that's the basic premise of this. I mean, there's some spans of time and some other things that could be looked at. But is that making sense? How this is connecting these events to our time in connection with Trump? Now, we haven't done anything to try to connect this beyond November 25th, 2018. Right, so we, we haven't done anything 
in that regard. We've just, we've left this Thanksgiving Day prediction to be what it was, something that would show us that even though we can create these structures and we can create dates, we can't actually predict events. Any questions on this? Just a comment. Okay. I, I find it sad that this presentation was made and that so many that were connected with Future for America decided that it should not be openly discussed. Right. So they recorded the videos, but they would not publish them. They did not want anybody discussing it. Right. It was sort of... It's a very like, Catholic attitude. Well, and, and it'd be like the Jews saying, you know, you can't do the calculation of Daniel 70 weeks or something like that. Right. Yeah. No. Uh, yeah, I mean, I was rather disappointed by the response, um, especially because of all the suspicion that they had. The one thing I really, really hate is when somebody's um, thinking that uh, I'm in some ways being deceptive or, you know, have a hidden agenda. I mean, I do have an agenda down in my shelf that's kind of hidden, but, you know, I don't have a hidden agenda. Look, everything I do is in the open. It would make no sense to be deceptive or to lie or to, um, you know, like, disguise what it is, what your motives are or anything like that. It, it would be unchristlike. It would be anti-Christian. It would be Catholic. Right? So, so it was, it was very disappointing to, to have this experience. Um, but I never let it affect, you know, how I saw the movement or the message. I didn't take it personally. Um, you know, even when we were finally kicked out after all this gossip and rumors and stuff, I didn't take any of it personally because I knew it really, it wasn't about me as a person anyway even though they tried to make it about me as a person. I knew it really was about what is truth. And and that God can vindicate his truth. And so you just leave things in God's hands. You don't you don't try to you know fight for your rights, so to speak. Um so anyway that's that's what we had is you know Trump's hand is restrained restrained, his hand is loose. But we didn't know what it meant. Now, um, now, 69 prophetic years is 24,840 days. And so if you go from Jeff's birth, which is November 7th, um, 19, uh, 19, what year? I always forget. 51. Okay, 51. Yeah, I always, I always think, is it 41? Is it 46? But yeah, so it's 51. So 1951. And so you're saying, uh, around that there's two, 24,840 days from Jeff's birth to November 10th, 2019. Yeah. Okay. And so that's going to be when we have this study regarding this, uh, structure. So prior to that, so back in November 21st was actually on November 20th. I, I planned to present that on November 21st at the School of the Prophets because Heidi and I had the, the prayer meeting. So Heidi was going to present Ellen White's visions on the Civil War. And then I was going to use that as a lead into looking at this structure and just saying, you know, tomorrow, what's going to happen? Can we predict anything? Uh, but that was shut down. So, so we ended up doing it at one lady's house in Arkansas there because they said, you need to go study this somewhere else off of the, the ground of the school of the prophets. To them, that was just kind of like a setup because then they said, well, you did this independent study apart from, you know, the school of the prophets. So you obviously are some kind of rebel who has a personal agenda, but, but they told me to do it. And they were there when I, set up the meeting and asked, you know, does anybody want to have this study at their house? And one lady said, yeah, I can have it at my place. So they were there when that happened. 
Uh, so nothing was done secretly. And Larry Hine was at that study. Right now, at the time, I just thought he was interested. Later, I find he's just basically there as a spy to give a false report about what was actually studied and what we actually predicted. So it was, it was very surprising, really, to me, uh, to see that type of behavior at that time. But that's what happened, right? So definitely everything we were trying to do was to have this study together with, you know, the movement to look at. So, so Jeff never really looked at it. He had a false report about what the study was about um, and, and what we actually had happened. So when he heard the presentation on November 10th, uh, 2019, um, 69 prophetic years from the time he was born, which I think is significant, um, he's going to accept it. He doesn't accept the, the interpretation of what happened. He has a different interpretation, which I think is even more telling about the fact that even after an event occurs, you're still going to have different interpretations about what it means. So the idea that we can just predict some future event because it's it fits into some structure. We knew back in 2018, we can't do that. Right. So just because somebody can, can create a structure, you know, using 1347 days and different things like that, which we can look back, back and we can see those structures and we can maybe understand them. We have to bring everything together. And so. um now, so hopefully that's clear. So why we're, why we're doing this study, why, how we can connect these civil wars, um, and connect them to our time. I think you know, we're going to look a little bit more at, at the American Revolution and the Civil War in 1863, but really we're interested about what's happening now. Um, so I have a question, uh, just based on what, um, was presented by uh, Iran there. So Iran put this in that if we have 69 prophetic years, so 69 times 360, it's 24,840, and that's the number of days. So it's basically, it's uh, 68 years. I'm just doing the math here. 68 years yes. and three days? Yeah, 68 years and three days, yeah. I just so so you can see if you're going to go back to 1951 and then you're going to count uh, 68 years, that's going to bring you to 2019. And then you have the three days that brings you to November 10th. So that's really interesting um, uh, how that works now. So what is the significance of 69 if we're going to look at this as, as a symbol then? So we're looking at it as a symbol. It brings us up to 69. So what, you know, if we were going to create a structure with this, just from Jeff's birth then, uh, what would we do? So is 69 a complete structure? Is a 69 a complete structure? How could it be a complete structure? I mean, wouldn't we be looking more, as was asked in the chat, if this has an interrelation with the 70 weeks? Right, right. So we see 69. We know that it's connected to the 70 weeks. Now, how exactly this would occur, I don't know. But um, though there must be must be some connection. So we're going to, I'm just going to go here and then do some calculations just. So how, how could we take this structure? What, what could we do with it? We have 69 prophetic years. Are we going to look to try to interrelate a structure regarding Jeff with these civil wars? Yeah, that's what I would try to figure out. Something to do with these civil wars in our time. Right. So Jeff's Jeff's birthday has a relationship to the lines. So we've seen that. OK, yeah. so is this is this a civil war within the United States or is this a type of civil war within the Adventist church? Hmm. 
Okay. Um, but I don't know. Why would you say within the Adventist church? Okay. The year 1951 was kind of a watershed within the church because they had a, a conference meeting. And as I recall, it was one of the first, if not the first, of the times where they had Wheeland and Short giving a presentation on righteousness by faith. Now I've got I've got some information on that. I'll just have to dig it out because I've got it, I believe, on one of my backup hard drives. Okay. Okay, so there's so you're saying that in that history there's stuff dealing with what's happening in the Adventist church with these dates. Correct. I mean okay. we're dealing, you know. We, we have seen this going on within the Adventist church that since 1888, that many of the younger ministers have looked to the older ministers for their guidance as to how to, to present this subject. And in 1951, if I'm recalling my facts right, you had Wheeland and Short giving a presentation, and it had an impact upon a young minister at that time that became known for his presentations, and that was Morris Venda. Oh, okay. But, but as we have been addressing, Morris Venden didn't have a clear understanding of exactly what was going on. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, yeah. So look into that. So I just want to look at this mathematic, obviously. Okay. <laughs> um, so... So what we have is 69 weeks. So we're just going to look at this calculation again. 69 times 360 gives you this number, 24840. And if we count from Jeff's birthday, it's going to bring us to this November 10th, 2019 date. Right? Now, if I take 69 weeks and I multiply it by 365 and a quarter, I'm going to get a different number, of course, right? And so if I count 69 weeks from Jeff's birthday in uh, 1951, that's going to bring me to his, uh, um, his birthday plus three days later, 2.25 days later in 2020. Does that make sense? So that is, or is that right? No, that actually brings me to his birthday. So, yeah, so if I do this, just hang on. Uh, yeah, so I'm just doing something here that you can't see on the calendar converter. And then I'm going to go back to 1915. I'm just putting these dates in here. Yes, so it's 25,203 days. Um, so if we just rounded this up as to be three days, 69 years is going to obviously bring you to November 7th, 2020. That's going to be Jeff's 69th birthday, right? But notice that it's 69 times 365.25 is going to bring you to that. So that's going to be 69 years, right? It's obviously literally 2523, right? So it's 25,203 days if you just look at it on the no way. And then if we go back. Uh, to November 10th, 
right? So November 10th was just simply taking that um, 69, you get this, right? If you divide that by 365.25, you get 68. You, and you take away the 68, you get this decimal. And then you add, uh, you multiply it by 365, you get three. So, so it's marking Jeff's birthday, obviously, 69 years later. But the, but it has that symbol of 2520 with a three at the end. Does that make sense to people? Okay. So, so we can now relate this to, I'll just show you this here in this little chart. This is just the calendar converter putting these dates. So you have November 11th, 1951 to, um, November, uh, 7th, 2019. That should be, I did this backwards. Hang on. Right. This. I wanted this to be November 10th. There we go. Uh, and then this one I have to switch to the other. I got the dates backwards. Okay. So when you look at the chart now, you can see the, this number here and need to get rid of that date. Okay. So this is when Jeff's born. This is 69 prophetic years um, to November 10th, 2019. When we have this study regarding the, the Thanksgiving Day prediction, and then one year later, so 69 actual years, is going to be 2520 plus three. Okay. So is this significant? Just looking at this thing here, if we have that number anywhere. So is this significant? This, this symbol for 69 years that it's connected to 2520 and this number three after it. So in Jeff 69. So what else did we do with Jeff's birthday in because I can't remember all the things about Jeff's birthday. Rand might remember some stuff. Is there anything significant that we can see here that I'm missing? So we can see that this 69 weeks connects to this 2520 symbol. I mean, I don't think that this, to see this number here as part of that span of 69 years, I don't think that that's just a coincidence. But now we have this as part of the 65 uh, this, um, the the seventy weeks. Any thoughts about it? Probably should draw a line with this, but I'll probably do that later. I'm still having to really consider this before I make any more comments. Yeah. Okay. Um. So the one thing that we could do, I guess, is we could look at this date in 2019, this November 10th date. Um, now, obviously, it's it's one day past November 9th, 2019. So as far as its connection to other things, um, you know, we 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 haven't really. You know, it's, it's not going to be it's going to be one day off from other spans of time that we have that we can connect to November 9th. So it's just November 10th. It's just one day later. So 69 sons of Gideon. OK. So remember, so with Gideon, we had the 70 sons that are killed. Well, really only 69, but they always say 70 in the story of Gideon. Um, so this is not really Gideon. So it's the sons of Gideon, but it's going to be uh, Jotham is the son that survives, right? And this is going to be when um, Abimelech is making himself king. And this is, so he goes up onto the Mount of uh, blessing, I believe, and gives this prophecy regarding um, what's going to happen to the people who follow Abimelech and to Abimelech himself, right? So in that story, we have the 70th week. So if we're going to then connect the 70th week to this, uh, what would that mean as far as a symbol? How would that help us understand 
this Thanksgiving Day prediction, these civil wars? Is there anything that connects us there to to that story? Because because we've applied this symbol to our lines, so so maybe there is something there that uh, we would have to address right. in in that story in Jotham's line um, and Jotham's parable. It's going to be dealing with. Uh, Jeff's FFA and the remnant of FFA, right? Jotham's parable. So that's going to be uh, connected there. That's what we did with Jotham's parable. And we started on November 9th. Here, I'll show you this. I know this is getting a little bit obscure here and going back to some stuff we studied before. But in Jotham's parable, we had the parable of the olive, the fig, and the the grape, right? The vine. So all of the fig and the vine. And we're going to start on November 9th, 2019. And uh, this is going to be in 1260 BC. We have Abimelech, 1260 minus 490 is 77, which equals 70 times 7, which is connected to Lamech. Uh, the two Lamex, one is 70, 7 times 70, the others, right? So we're going to take 770, create it as 7 times 70, and also the 777, right? And then we have a me sending an email to Jeff, this failed prediction. Now you can see then how when I'm there in Arkansas on November 9th, and I do these two presentations on 273, which is going to lead to this failed prediction email that is, my understanding of the Mayan calendar and its connection to 273. Um, we can see that this fits in with this 70th week of Jotham's parable. So the fact that they rejected the Thanksgiving Day study, because if they had accepted it, if we had studied this, we could have come to the conclusion sooner that we can't make predictions. Right? Wouldn't that be the case? Okay, but let's let's apply this in a different manner. Okay. Have we not accepted that God held his hand over a mistake in the figures on the 1843 chart? Yes, but they still had an opportunity to see that, that mistake beforehand. Correct. Well, they, they had the opportunity because... In scripture, no man knows the day or the hour right. except the Father, right? Yeah. And he's going to make it known. So what if this was a situation very much like that? Well, yes. I mean, yeah, I understand. Because <laughs> when I say if, I'm not saying that, you know, I mean, this is all in God's providence. Right. But. You can see when I'm there on November 9th, I'm presenting the study on the Mayan calendar with the symbol 273. On April 26th, I emailed Jeff after he had done his study on the Le Levitical chiasm. I used this as a model connected with the Mayan calendar to show that November 9th and, of course, July 18th are on this line of failed predictions. Right. So I emailed that to Jeff on April 26th, which is, of course, a symbol of the 26th day of the fourth month. Right. And then that mind calendar date is going to give us this July 11th. And we're going to see July 11th, 10th and 11th. They're going to be connected with Jeff giving his last presentation, uh, July 11th. And then uh, July 10th symbolizes the 10th day of the seventh month. But you can also see that the 11th, so Jeff is going to give his last presentation on the, the 11th day of the seventh month, the inversion of his birthday, right? Okay. Yes, you see that there? Okay. And then, um, so that is going to be the mind calendar gives us that with the 273 symbol. That is, there's two dates that the mind calendar gives us, and the center date is July 10th. It's 273 days from either between either of those dates. So you 
Uh, so it's what, 546 days divided by two is 273. July 10th becomes the center of that. And then we have the remnant of FFA. So Jeff makes his last presentation, July 18th. This is the parable of the fig. It's 9-11, right? The arrival of the second angel. That is, it's Judges 9-11. And, um, and then we have uh, this formalization of March 27th, 2021. Julian date symbolizing that. And then April 26th, 2021, uh, this 13888 on the Mayan calendar. 130888. Again, you can see the April 26, 2021 date. Um, and um, I'm trying to remember why we put that date there. I don't remember. Um, and then we're going to have, so that's the empowerment of the message happens on that date. That's going to be uh, a year after that fa email failed prediction thing. And then we have the, the parable of the vine, December 25th. 2021. The point is, this is Jotham. He is the 70th son. He is the 70th week. And so could we say that that 69 prophetic years leading to uh, November 10th, 2019, and it was inclusive to be November 9th. So point to that. But this is really about the failure of this these predictions that this movement had made. And that if if we would have listened, we would have avoided this, right? If we would have not acted in the way that we did, we wouldn't have had to go through this experience for God to teach us. Because the reason this movement has passed through this experience is to show us our sin, to show us that we are not who we think we are, that we have we've been living a lie as far as who we are as Christ's representatives, and that we have this opportunity to be changed in character and to represent Christ. And so, so God has done something special for us uh, in this movement by allowing us to go through these disappointments to, to teach us, right? And, and he's given us all this information, and we need to learn from it. We can't keep making the same mistakes, Next downfall. So, um, that makes sense. That that's why we have the 69 to November 10th, 2019. At, at the least, that we can see that we should be able to. So, this should give us a lot of uh, reason to pause and consider um, what it is that God is wanting to show us about the future. Now, there was in Stephen's study, because um, I haven't watched the whole study yet, uh, but in Stephen's study, he presented um, a chart. So I'm going to do it this way. So in this chart, we have, um, so this is just the video, because I might have the chart, but I don't want to take the time to look at it. I have the video here. So this is where I stop watching. Now, He has a chart here from August 11th, 1840 to October 22, 1844. And we have a symbol there. Now, uh, the symbol, of course, we can see from April 19th, the first, the first disappointment, the second angel arriving, 187 inclusive days to October 22, 1844, right? So that's normally how we count it. We say it's 187 days cardinally. You would have a zero at the beginning. And so it'd be 186. So an inclusive count is using a symbol of a cardinal number, but actually you're, it looks like a cardinal number, but it's not. We're not saying the 187th day. We're saying 187 days. So that's an inclusive count, right? Now there's 1,347 days from August 11th, 1840 to April 1st, 18, or April 19th, 1844 to the first day of the first month. Now, it was noticed by Colin uh, that Trump is elected on November 9th, 2016. And there's 1,347 days to July 18, 2020. So we have the same parallel here. And 
And then it's 187 days from this disappointment, 187th day, it's an inclusive count, to Biden uh, coming into office on January 20th, 2021. We know that the School of the Prophets is sold the next day, January 21st, so that's 187 cardinal days. But here, to Biden coming into office is 187 ordinal days, right? And uh, he shows here that there's this symbol um, that is the 187th prime number is 1117. And the 1347th prime number is 111117, right? So it's got four ones in a set. And we also know that November 7th, Jeff's birthday, is connected to that symbol as well, correct? Agreed. So, so we have these symbols here um, that, you know, we, we can't ignore. Now, when Colin looks at this and he sees that he has these dates, um, we, we have to know that this is correct, right? So what Colin notices is correct. Now, Stephen analyzes it a bit more, looking at the prime numbers. Um, but we can see it's connected to Jeff's birthday. <clears throat> now, when we have symbols, how we interpret them is extremely important, right? So, so we can have these symbols, but we can come up with different interpretations of these symbols. Because some people can use these symbols. This is, um, uh, uh, Gideon Zephod, right? You understand what I'm talking about? Explain it a little bit more, please. Okay. So when we're talking about the ephod that's that's made, it's going to become a snare, right? Okay. So if we go back to Judges, you're going to have uh, Gideon's ephod, right? So he's going to make this ephod. And the way that we understood his ephod is it, it symbolizes all of this chronology that we use, right, in making the July 18, 2020 prediction. Now, Gideon's not going to be want to, wanting to be made a king, but he makes this ephod. And so this ephod becomes a snare. And, I, and I've been insisting that... We have correct chronology, but we have to be careful how we use it. And I believe in a sense that this chronology has become a snare in how it's being used. So if we start using this chronology to predict events, and there's, call is not the only one. There's lots of people who are connected with this movement who are using these structures and, and predicting all kinds of crazy things. Um, but that's what I would see the danger is. We have something that, that, you know, God gives us this, this message, but the message can be misused. So when we get back to, um, you know, this video here, and we can say this is true, but if we start connecting this now, to Jeff's birthday, then we would have to say that um, when people are trying to make predictions, right? And they're now the other thing is that Jeff has come back into the picture, which is for me kind of disappointing because Jeff was correct in recognizing that he was Miller and that the best thing he could do was step aside and not um, assert his views and ideas into the movement, right? And also the way in which he's done that, sort of in this, uh, he's inaccessible, you know, we can't talk to him. Um, he's not as direct as he used to be, right? So he's, he's now sort of skirting around the issues, um, Instead of, you know, just telling us what he's thinking and why, and then there's no discussion about it. 
Um, but he is representing Miller after October 22, 1844. And so, so we have these things. We have, we have this 69 prophetic years that connects to Jeff's birthday. Um, and that connects to this November 10th date, which is connected to November 9th. Dealing with this Thanksgiving Day prediction. So what we have to say is we can look at these lines and we can see that these things are correct, but we have to be careful how we use them. And and so Colin's taken something that's completely valid, but he's going to apply it in ways that are going to be connected with predicting Trump coming back into office and the Sunday law shortly coming after that because Trump's going to bring in the Sunday law. And you also have, um, what is it called? Project 2025 or something like that. People know what I'm talking about. Anybody know what, what Project 2025 is? I've seen a video, part of a video, and I don't know what it was about. Uh, yeah. Now, the people putting out that video um, are partly cl- connected to this movement. Um, but they have a, teaching a bunch of errors, so they're not really sure who they are and where they came from. Um, uh, but uh, I don't know if I can find it. Um but it's supposed to be some kind of... Uh, it was in my email. It's some kind of group. It's some kind of alliance with the Christian churches and Republicans so that when Trump gets back into office, they're going to replace um, people in the administration with with conservatives, with Republicans. In other okay. words, what this this project is to reshape the executive branch of the United States government. Yeah. Basically attempting a reform of the federal government to support more of the views of of Mr. Trump. Okay. So um so what people are then predicting from this is they're saying, well, um, you know, this is this is what's going to bring in the Sunday law. Now, there definitely is obviously something prophetic going on there. I mean, I'm not going to just, you know, cast it aside. I mean, 2025 is kind of like 2520, et cetera. Um, and obviously, this is something that we see happening. But um, to sort of make a prediction then from that, that somehow we see 2025 is when you know, the Sunday law is going to happen. We know that that can't be the case because there's too much that has to happen before the Sunday law. But we could have another type of the Sunday law in the United States. But again, this is just making predictions, making predictions based upon not looking at everything, just looking at some things. And so... We have to we have to be careful on how we do this. We can't just, you know, we can't just constantly be making predictions. Hmm. So, yeah, with this project twenty twenty five, I think about that a bit. Uh, I looked into it a little bit. I watched some of the video. Now, did did Stephen? Um, I'm trying to look at his notes because he has these new charts. And I didn't watch all the videos, so so I'm just looking through his documents here, trying to see if I can find anything on some of this video. Okay. Any other thoughts about this November 22nd uh, Thanksgiving Day prediction, what we should do with this? I mean, we can say that this prediction, obviously, we couldn't predict anything. But is it still just then to be something in the past or do we you know we can connect it to to Jeff 69 years we can get connected then to the 70th week is that all we do with it we can now say well the prophecy of Jotham is a prophecy it's a warning to this movement 
Because there's lots of symbolism in that story. I mean, Abimelech's being made king. So is what's happening with Jeff republishing these letters? Is the me- the the message of Jotham, the 70th week, is that a rebuke to the, those that are going to follow Jeff at this time and abandon all the light that God has given us? Because remember, Gideon is about the story of July 18th, right? I would think that to be correct. Yeah. So, so if we're going to take Abimelech, He's, we could, we could say, you know, it's not Jeff, but it's an illegitimate son of Gideon coming in and Jotham then giving this rebuke to that illegitimate son, um, may, being made king. And that illegitimate son is going to kill 69 of the 70 sons of Gideon, leaving only the one left, which is the youngest one, right? So if we have that 69 prophetic years that Jeff is of age on November 10th, 2019, when we're discussing all of these things, um, this, this would be a testimony against what people are doing. A warning that it's not going to stand, right? I mean, that's a very unfortunate interpretation, if it's the correct interpretation. And then, you know, I have to say again, it's not against anything against Jeff as a person. You know, we would have to say what applied to Miller also applies to Jeff. When Jeff dies, there will be angels waiting at his grave, right? I can see. Yeah, go on. I said, I no, I could, I could see that, yes. Yeah. So, so we know then, um, and, and just an example of this, the story of Jotham, or not Jotham, the story of Na- Naaman. Naaman dips in the water seven times, uh, but he asks of Elisha to be excused when he's in, uh, with his, his lord, right? The king of Syria. And they're in the house of Rimen. And that the king of Syria is going to you know, place his hand in, on Naaman's hand. Naaman says, I'm never going to worship these false gods. But can God allow me to be in that house with my Lord? Right. And and so he's granted that that liberty. Right. So I look at that if you deal with the seven times because he washes in the water of Jordan seven times. Um that this can connect to those who um, have accepted the seven times, but, you know, they're going to go astray to some degree. It's not like that they're in apostasy, but there's just things that they're not going to be seeing. I don't know if that, I I just bring it up because that's what the pastor preached about in Warburg uh, uh, yesterday was about the story of Naaman, at least, one of the things, and maybe it wasn't the past, maybe it was the South School. But anyway, we studied into Naaman. Um, that was the South School. So, um, so God is forgiving, right? You know, Jeff is in a position where light was withheld from him, and he's not going to be accountable for that light. Does that, that seem fair? That's basically the position Miller was in. If I could sit down with Jeff and go through all this history and everything, you know, I'm sure he would see it correctly if his mind's okay. But because that information has been withheld, we have to accept that, um, you know, Jeff's Jeff's not going to be held accountable. Okay, so that's where we're going to leave leave off today. Now we're going to try to – Look at then at the connection between these civil wars, uh, particularly what happens in 977 and the American Revolutionary War. So we want to we want to understand that connection.
So a little bit of history, and I'm, I'm going to try to get as much study as I can in on this. I'm going to have a busy day, but if other people can spend a bit of time looking at some of this history, uh, we're going to look at the uh, the American seal and things like that, some other studies that we've done in the past that, that connect this history with ours. So let, let's close with prayer. And dear Father in heaven, thank you for the study this morning. We uh, ask that you can be with us throughout this day. May your Holy Spirit continue to speak to our hearts. May you help us in the trials that we face. And can you continue to watch over us and answer our prayers. Um, we ask for your healing hand upon each person and that you can be with us throughout this day and bring us together again. We pray in Jesus' name.